I'm starting this one off with a fitting for an event I have potentially in the next vlog but we're at Isabel Christensen it's right next to Harrods on Bootchamp Place and we have so many beautiful dresses to try on uh, I've just learned all about the brands we've got all the celebs that have worn the brands up here we've got Prince Charlene, Prince Gabriella, Susanna Reid, Paris Hilton, oh, Shania Twain there's so many this is my favorite one We've got Joan Collins. So it is a very renowned English British brand, which is ideal for where I'm going. So we're gonna try on some dresses today and see if they fit and what they look like. So yeah. This is the first one. We love the colour. The green is, is gorgeous. gorgeous well? Really nice. I love how since you've just made me like now just saying know. it looks a little bit like do you remember Kylie Jenner in the off-white dress? that she wore, minus the baseball hat, but the same silhouette, isn't it? I really enjoy it. Love the dark green, it's like that Harrods colour, isn't it? So do you feel like when you step forward, can you see a little bit of that mild tra Oh, you don't see it as much because of the tights, you don't see- Oh, I've got leggings on, yeah. But that's what I mean, you would see a little bit of transparency if it was against skin. So yeah, with the leggings and all the rest of it, maybe you don't, but you see how it does have a slip? Yeah, no, So how it's you can work it through. And then obviously inside you saw it has that satin culotte that goes with the design. Really gorgeous. So this is the next one. I you think this is. Your bag. I can make for you. We can do if you want. Yes, you know, you're doing it, you know, because if you would, you know, you can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> this is beautiful, though. I love this. I wasn't expecting this, is like one of those ones that you don't think you would, and then you actually love it. Very sexy, elegant, everything together. So good. Well, if you wanted to create a mild bit of cleavage more or you wanted less oh it looks gorgeous on camera you'd have to pin it quite a lot if it was this one so yeah. you have to really pin it to show it off but we could pin this one as well i think it'd be fun to try this one just yeah look how beautiful this is i was just saying with my hair up this would be so good i need some platform heels <laughs> i'm so short We've got about 10 sizes too big. <laughs> I knew it was going to be too big, I told you that. It's just for you to get a sense it's of It's beautiful. Can you see the effect there of that sort of basque skirt in the jacket? That, yeah, that no, it's, it's the silhouettes. Yeah. All your silhouettes are so, so beautiful. Thank I feel like you. the first lady. Well, I, I, I always say when clients come in here, the most important thing to start with is not your colour, not the preference with regards to detailing. I always need to establish silhouette. Imagine that for like a wedding reception before your guests arrived the night before. Yes. So beautiful. It's awesome. <laughs> Guys, this is two size. What size is what I'm wearing? It's a lot of sizes bigger, isn't it? We are. <laughs> to the floor. And then these are, are these detachable so you can have it without? So good. Good morning guys. I am just actually off shooting again today. We're doing something um a little different. I'm shooting the Kokaga Christmas campaign today. We're doing it in the dark because <laughs> we wanted fairy lights and it Bond Street, Oxford Street, or like the bottom of Regent Street actually is so beautiful with the Christmas lights. So I've never shot really in the dark before, so it's a bit of a test. I'm hoping it's gonna work out because I'm not entirely sure. Um, I'm sure it'll be fine. We're gonna film in store with Kurt Geiger as well. Just finished off the makeup. I always wear more makeup than usual to shoot in because it looks better on camera. So if you ever see me out in public, that is why I look like I've got a lot of makeup on. Um, I have a few little things to unbox with you. The shoot we did last video, the Tasaki one, they kindly gave me the most beautiful necklace. I don't know if you can see that. This is from their Danger collection. I just think that is the most stunning thing. Imagine that on your neck. So thank you, Tasaki, for that. That is the cutest little Christmas gift if anyone's looking for something like that. But yeah, 
I feel a bit stressed. It's been Black Friday yesterday. There's a hell of a lot going on. Right, I'm gonna show you a bit behind the scenes because I know I say that every single week. Um, but I am gonna take you along today because it should be fun. I love the Kurt Geiger team and I'm not looking forward to the cold. It has finally got cold. This is the Charlotte Tilbury airbrush, by the way. Favorite part, favorite powder. But if you want an airbrush finish, especially for video, Estee Lauder Double Wear Concealer, Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush. You just get that kind of flawless finish. Right, let's go shoot. We are in Turk today. We are filming the Christmas campaign. I've got lots to show you, so I'm going to share with you some of my favorite things in store at the moment. Because I feel like Kurt Geiger's really good at the game. And I want to share with you some of my favorite things. So let's take a look. Oh, it's, it's a lot of sparkle and a lot of color, which you guys know I'm like lost to a flame. Enjoy a bit. But for your grandkids, how cool is this? But even with a white shirt, I like double size. A beautiful clutch for your Christmas party. Then over here we have the bow collection. As you can see, I am sporting a little bow micro bag, but they come in all different sizes. And even a can clutch. It's not a Coca-Cola, it's a Kurt Geiger handbag. And then one of my favorite things in the whole store is the Eagle Clutch. It's a handbag. I can open it. It's a bird. It's not a bag, it's a bird. I love that. It reminds me of Carrie from Sex and the City. You guys will know the scene when she's like... Okay, and then we have the Christmas. If you're looking for a good clutch for your Christmas party, you can have these. And then if you wanted something a little bit more casual, we have these slouch coats. Look how cool that is. And then the iconic rainbow bag, which I have already, which I love. And this is what we're shooting today. We're gonna go outside and shoot in a minute. Another cat. You just love it, it's so fun. Okay, let's go see some shoes. Oh, I like that one. This is cool. The eagle shoes, I love the cold slip back, slip back. We've got them in all different colours. We also have the beautiful gold bag. And again, with Kurt Geiger, they tend to do different sizes, so you can pick your size. But look how fabulous these are. Christmas collection here at Scrum. But if you wanted something a little bit more basic, simple black suede boot, the little eagle emblem, I think it's just so good for like your winter wardrobe. I absolutely love. Look how amazing. I have these already. Then we have these ones as well, which I do love. Then if you are a flat shoe person, we have some amazing loafers here. I love these. Imagine this with a white trouser. So good. Okay, now we're gonna go shoot outside. It's freezing cold, so you best go like the real, because we just restarted somewhere. <laughs> Good morning guys, we are starting off the day with Jo Malone, we've got some gorgeous candles here and an, and an abbey. <laughs> we are at the Jo Malone ice rink in Battersea, I think it's open to the public. In fact, yeah, it definitely, the ice rink's definitely open to the public. But we're ice skating with Jo Malone, so we've got lots of igloos, lots of candles, and it's the new gingerbread collection, which I think will smell amazing. We have Henry during you know, probably late. <laughs> Because he always is. I guarantee he'll walk in at half ten. I wonder how long we even get to go on the ice rink for. Not too long. Might miss the ice skating. But uh, can you ice skate? I mean, I'm not in a professional manner. I can get round. There's a little penguin you can hold on to, isn't there? Here's Henry. Oh, he's not late. He's not. Ten, ten past, guys. <laughs> Uh, appearances right now. I just had a prediction that you'd walk in at half past. What time is it? Am I late or on time? You're early. Not bad. <laughs> Hi guys, I am your um, perfumery master today. My name is Henry, and we have here the Joe Malone. Oh shit! 
You need to get a new camera so bad. I do a little bit. So this is the gingerbread collection. The gingerbread collection. This one here is green almond and red currant cologne. Very nice. All Joe Malone scents are mainly uniform. Henry's come to stock up on all the Christmas presents for his family. <laughs> Ooh, they're nice. But it's really cute. It's all Christmassy. Yeah, it is. I like the bottles as well, the stripes. My mum loves Joe Malone. It's a good mum present, isn't My it? My girlfriend was just like, please bring back a candle for me. I said, I love. Okay, let's go skating. Should we go skating? Do we think Henry can skate? I said he looked like a giraffe. I skate it. So rude. <laughs> true though, right? No, it's not true. Are you gonna fall? Imagine a giraffe trying to ice skate. That's, that's Henry. Right, let's go skating. Hey guys, I'm Henry being <laughs> stressed. I said to Henry, I was like, oh, his skin's looking so sad. I guess it's like so easy to influence. Do we influence each other a lot? I think we do, but I really like them. That was literally before I came here. I was like, I need to get some black leggings. And I thought, Laura always has nice leggings as well. And then you like skin's leggings like a scrunch bum. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> They are quite good. How do you do? Listen, you're from Canada, you must be unreal at this. I would hug you, but I <laughs> oh! <laughs> I think you're very confident. I'm filming the outfit. Hi! Why is this? Is it Frankie shot? Is it? I've seen that on Yeah, I've Ooh! <laughs> oh, sorry, I was about to start filming the scenery. Hi, nice to meet you. Yeah, you can hear that I haven't been filming the whole time. I just filmed Henry. I think I'm ready to go. We have, how many times have we fallen over? I think I'm on about four. And yeah, you've you got a record for paying the most person to fall over the <laughs> But this is, is this here open to, is this open to the public? What? This is open to the public, right? Yeah, of course it is, yeah, yeah. So you can come down, it's by Battersea. Oh, but the, gin, the gingerbread collection with Joe Malone, there's like a little gingerbread house, gingerbread man. Yeah. Joe Malone is, a good Christmas present, isn't it? It's a phenomenal Christmas present. I don't think you can go Candles, wrong. Candles, jokes, fragrances, even better. Yeah. Joe Malone or Dip Teeth? Sorry? Joe Malone or Dip Teeth? Whoa, tough. Okay, are you ready, guys? I'm going to I'll race, race you to the, to the end. I wouldn't race anything, all right? Because you're about to break the day. <laughs> See ya. I think it's the first time I've felt Christmassy today. That's nice. Yeah. I put the videos in here of me and Abby falling over. <laughs> it was quite classic. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> that is unreal. <laughs> that is 15 seconds of classic comedy. I am just going to an event with Dolce & Gabbana and I am kind of, my eye makeup is kind of already done but I'm going to show you most of 
what I do to my makeup. Um, starting off, I put the Eucerin Oil Control SPF Amazing for Acne. I was never able to wear SPF until that one. It's really good and it dries really mattifying. So I kind of also use it as like a base. I'm gonna touch up the eyes a little bit. This is my beloved palette. It's Dior Backstage. And what I love about it is that it just blends really, really nicely. Um, I don't, I used to do epic winged eyeliner and watching back my videos, you can go see, it just really was not a vibe. So I kind of create the same effect with eyeshadow now, like blending it out. This color is always super lovely this time of year. It's like gold glitter. And um, you can tell how much I use this palette because it's like literally battered to death. Love a bit of sparkle at Christmas, don't we? Draw through as well whatever blusher I'm using into the eyes. I like to like draw it all together. I am going to use Double Wear Estee Lauder Concealer. I use the shade 2N. As you can see, my neck is a very different color to my face. I don't tend to fake tan my face because it clings to, oh, this is a whole different topic as well. So I am currently getting rid of my pigmentation I use a skin bleacher and I go for laser, but I'm very pl prone to like pigmentation patches. You can probably see one there. I'm planning on getting laser very, very soon. So when you're in the process of doing that, pig tan tends to cling and make it look even worse. So unfortunately, I cannot turn my face, which is really annoying because <laughs> I tend to have to wear makeup a lot of the time because otherwise I've got a very white face and a very tan neck. Sometimes I just wish I was a boy. It's so much easier. Although it is fun being a girl. I do enjoy it all. And then this is the best product ever. It's the Charlotte Til Tilbury airbrush and it literally does just that. If you want an eyeliner, a pencil one that doesn't budge on your waterline, Estee Lauder Double Wear. The Double Wear range literally does not move. And I like to use products that don't budge, like mattifying, long wearing products that don't budge, and then go in very, very lightly, lightly with them. So they stay on for like a long, long time. Then I just go in and put some blusher underneath my eyes. So like, the eyes match the cheeks. I'm a peachy girl. I don't know if you can see. Probably should do this in daylight. This light is probably a little bit bright for this. I have really low key, key eyebrows. We just brush them through. It's the Benefit Gimme Brow, but I'm not gonna lie, there's nothing. Pixie by Petra, nude liquid lip. Like, what's new here? What is new? <laughs> Again, I like it because I literally put hardly anything on. There we go, my makeup is done. You can see the eyes, the gold shimmer a little bit better, the peachy tones, all about the peachy tones, and then the lipstick. Like, I could kiss boys and nothing would happen. <laughs> Don't talk to me about boys, honestly. <sighs> okay, I'm just gonna wear as many layers as possible with a Holland Cooper coat over the top, Holland Cooper trench. I feel like it's not an event where I'm gonna be taking my coat off because it's in the store. So it's always a good option, a Holland Cooper trench. It always seems so classy, but then you can literally just wear base layers underneath. And um, so yeah, that's the plan of action. My hair's looking really dark. I don't think you guys have seen my natural hair in a long time, have you? So this is all my natural hair. And honestly, it's been the best condition that I've been in years. And I keep getting it cut and it's like at the root, it feels so thick. And then I think once I get to about here, we're going to have really good hair. But um, this is kind of the stage Wow, I got the little fringe cut in, <laughs> which I fucking hate. <laughs> I, I mean, I hate it just because it's annoying. But let me guys know if you think I suit it. I'm not entirely sure whether I'm on board with it. <laughs> I think I'm going to like it when it hits about my chin. Because right now, I will regret the choice. You know? You win some, you lose some. What do you think? I mean, it might look cute. 
No. Yeah, I just regret the choice, you know? Sometimes we do these things to ourselves, don't we? I think it needs just like another inch on it. So, might look nice in the new year. Hi We're guys. Back, baby. We're matching. Kind of. Yeah, kind of. My I look, blue coat. I look very blue. Yours is mean, very blue. We are, our skin looks blue, we're so cold. London weather is freezing. Is it because we're against the yellow light? <laughs> do you post that bit when you post it on, on, on YouTube? I hope you do. Anyway, Ready? we're at a Dolce & Gabbana event. Dolce & Gabbana. And we're in Holland Cooper. And I'm in Reese. This is what I wore to when we went to Saints. Cheltenham. It was. It's a nice coat. And you're in I Reese. Are you actually one. in Reese? I'm, I'm All Saints boots, Reese trousers, Reese roll neck, and a Reese jacket. Are you actually? And an All Saints. I swear on my life, yes, I actually am. So Laura's saying that, Inside by the way. joke. Inside joke, yeah. We don't need to explain. It, no, for your sake, we don't need, we don't need to explain. It. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? I told them we might do a podcast. So I want to know what they would say. I would really like your guy, guys and girls' thoughts. I think me and Laura would make a great duo, and I, it'd be a good team. I reckon we should, might try it. I think we should do a trial. But Ten you, episodes. The question is, would you piss me off? <laughs> yes, but the honesty would be that I'd be very honest. Would I be sitting there waiting for you for half an hour? No, because the studios are expensive. Okay. So I don't think I'll have to be late. Okay, we'll see. I'll, by the way, this takes research, though. You do realise podcasts are very deep and you have to learn and you have to understand everyone it, and get on. This is stuff. what we need to talk about, what type of podcast we do. Because some are. I would be, I think I'll have to lead the conversations. And Laura can be the other Okay, we're waiting because... Henry's early for once in his life. In fact, me and Laura were the first ones here. We actually walked in the door and they told us to get out because <laughs> we were early. too early. Okay, Pass so we'll take you around in a minute. By the way, I'm the one who told <laughs> you to do the fragrance launch. <laughs> well, I just presumed, you know why. Stand there. Just right. in a boot shop. What are, we, what, are we, what are we wearing? I have the Holland Cooper Trench. I'm wearing size eight, if you're wondering. Holland Cooper Nick with the little I'm going to keep that emblem and the buttons. I like that. Skims, leggings. I've got a pair of skims that are actually really thick, so it keeps your legs warm, and then some, some dudes. So that outfit. I like it. Boots are my favourite. Of course they are. <laughs> Man loves a thigh high boot. Man does love a thigh high boot. <laughs> Table brown electric is sixteen thousand seven hundred sixteen pounds. Um, a side table, a bedside table, this is twelve thousand four hundred eight. Pocket change for us. Pocket change. Just pocket change. Yeah. But honestly, the store is beautiful. It's fucking it's stunning. It's so sexy. So I'll, I'll take you around now so you can have a little um, some of the dog chips. It's very fabulous. Why did they invite us here? I'm broke. Hi guys, I am back and I have just ordered a Deliveroo. What is your Wagamama's order? Mine is chicken. Oh no, that's chicken skewers. Get my protein in. I like to eat a lot of protein. Gets me muscles. Um, and ginger chicken. You do. You do. And a green smoothie. Must not get ill, must not get ill this week. Absolutely must not get ill this week. I've actually just answered, um, put that down. I've actually just answered some questions for my friend Matt, who is doing a documentary for his, I think he's doing a degree or something. I went to college with him when I was 18 years old. I've spoken about it a lot on this channel. It's where I met Abby, who you met before. And that is the one good thing that came out of that college. So 18 to 21, I did ballet, jazz, dancing, everything, singing, even though I can't sing, and acting in a stage school. And he's doing a study on 
eating disorders and mental disorders and it not being um i think the bbc covered it recently there's been a bit of a thing where like stage schools back then i think now it's a whole different story but like when i went to theater school when was that like the beginning of the noughties like just off the back of the 90s god how old am i <laughs> it's like 17 years ago i went to college so it was a whole different like a whole different place the world and it was very much the same time size zero was very mainstream in the media like cheryl cole was tiny every all the a-list celebrities were minuscule it was thin 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 how thin can you be all over every magazine and at the same time i entered this stage school a very healthy weight um i think i was around eight stone i had great tits i had 32 double d breasts fantastic i want them back <laughs> actually i feel like they're, they're not too far off i reckon i've got c's now we just need to get a little bit further but um actually no i think it might be a d let's not put ourselves down so i entered this college and they weighed us every Monday and documented our weight. Not only did they do this, they measured our fat with a pincher. And ironically, I had the fattest back in my class and I was probably the thinnest. And it's always stuck to me that I have a fatty back. <laughs> well, I used to anyway. Um, and in our first year, I think they, head of years or the head teacher called an emergency meeting and told everyone that we were all too fat and needed to lose weight. I then lost the weight and I had a teacher, a male teacher, that would be like, you look amazing, when I walked past him in the corridor. And the more I lost weight, the more he would do this kind of thing where he'd be like, you look amazing. And it was so slyly done when no one else could hear. So, because he was in charge of giving us roles for the shows and stuff, I was obviously listening to him and thinking I looked amazing being so thin. I lost a lot of weight. I think at this point I'd lost about a stone. And then... I did this end of year show and this guy had put me in a diamante thong and bra and paraded me around stage in a solo being so thin and it was like literally if you look at back at this video it's literally like a parade of thinness it's awful i'd completely lost my boobs i'd come i was so tiny and it was almost glorified but i couldn't see that it was wrong because obviously the media was all thin 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 i was almost being rewarded for being so thin so in my eyes being thin was a good thing and at 18 years old you don't know you don't know enough to like you think you're such an adult back then and you're really really not and i i just continued to lose the weight it was really easy for me to lose the weight and i wonder how people felt in that college that couldn't lose the weight like it was really obvious that there was some sort of issue there because you could physically see that i'd lost so much weight but everyone was under the same pressure but it must be, they must have felt awful if they couldn't lose the weight and they thought they had to. I could lose the weight and it was like physically, do you know what I mean? Anyway, I then went on to be completely humiliated in college. One of the head of years was like, you're so thin in front of everyone. I just remember her raging at me in front of the whole school all the, all the years you're so thin, you're not getting any more shows, parts and shows if you, you don't put on weight. Padded bras don't fool me. She actually humiliated me. But this was the first time anyone had really said anything to me. I'd always been commended for being thin. So it was just two opposite ends of the spectrum. They really mentally fucked with my head back then. And I'm so, I feel so sad for 18 19 year old me who was just it's a, an abuse in some way where i wasn't in control of my own body like i just had people telling me i was too fat or too thin at such a young age weighed all the time 
And we even had a nutritionist that told us to starve ourselves. At one point for lunch, I was eating, having a Red Bull every day. That was it for lunch. So I wasn't even eating. And it's hard to say, did I have an eating disorder at that college? It wasn't, no, because I was always mentally strong. Like I looked in the mirror and I knew I was thin, but I was being told I should be thin. Like if everyone said you should be fat, I'd put on weight. Like I was just doing what people told me to do because they were in charge of my career and what I was meant to be doing. And I don't think I've, I've only ever reached the weight that I went into college at 18 years old now at 35. That's crazy. I, I hadn't seen the problem because my whole entire life even after college, I got a job as a dancer and it was like, you're too th you need to be thin, you need to be thin. In my first, one of my dancing jobs after college, girls would actually get the sack because they were too hot. Honestly. And it was only since starting this industry and I'd get a lot of comments on being thin that I started to realize and when I got COVID so bad, I had no underlying conditions. I thought you know that. <laughs> they tested it. And I was like, this has happened to me because I'm too thin. That's the only, only thing that I could think of. It was like, my body wasn't strong enough. So over the past year or so, I have, you might, uh, you guys always comment, I've got myself into the best shape of my life. And it's been from a health perspective, like it's not really been about what I looked like. I wanted to drown out the noise and just concentrate on getting myself into the healthiest point possible. And with doing that, the noise has stopped. No one tells me I'm thin anymore. Everyone just tells me I look good. Um, what's my workout? Can you give me your diet tips? And it was, it's stemmed from, for the first time, not listening to anyone around me and just concentrating on my health and I wish at 18 years old I had the education and the strength to concentrate on my health because they taught me to not be healthy. I went into an institution that taught me to really not be healthy. That's horrendous. I know the BBC have covered this kind of topic recently about stage schools and their nutrition side of things and how horrific it was. And I can vouch for it. It was truly horrific. And I don't think any young girl or boy should be put through that. So what you can take from this is if you concentrate on your health and your nutrition and learn about nutrition, learn about food, like my hair has grown so much since I've started to concentrate on being healthy. Not about looking in the in the mirror and loving what I see. I literally just do the healthiest things possible for my body. And I've, from the back of that, got into the best shape of my life. Like I feel good at 35. Like when, when people ask me how old I am, I feel proud to say I'm 35 because I feel good. I feel better than I ever have done and that's purely from just concentrating <laughs> on being healthy and not listening to anybody. So if you ever have someone tell you how you should look, if you are being your healthiest self and looking after your body, screw them. <laughs> I really do wonder what psychological effects that college had on me though. Awful. Anyway, I'm going to love you and leave you. I'm going to eat my wagon moments and we've got one hell of a week coming up. So yeah, please subscribe if you're new. I see the light shining on the stage. This is what I